guys. Welcome back to our non-toxic podcast. I'm Hannah. And I'm Ashley. We have a guest today, everybody. So you have probably seen or not seen that it's typically just Bree and myself. We had the one special appearance from my younger brother. That episode was a surprising hit given that we have a largely female um, 20 to 30 something listener demographic. So a little surprised by how well that one did, but whatever. Maybe he brought some groupies. I loved it. I sent in a girlfriend application immediately. He is broke. So I feel like you'd have to sugar mama him. Um, yeah. I won't say that I would recommend it for you for your sake. <laughs> yeah. He's very nice. Very nice young man. But funds are not there. So he's a little young for me. A little young. A little for young you. young hey, for Cougar me. Town. We yeah. love it. So I'm going to give you a chance to introduce yourself. Okay. We're going to go through some questions. Okay. It's going to be a very fun little interview. So Ashley, let me give you my version of you of your biography. If okay. you don't mind. Yeah. So. I have known Ashley since 2015 ish, mm -hmm. 14, 15. We went to high school together. We weren't besties in high school just because you were older and way cooler than me, but besties now. I heard about that, but okay. <laughs> I'll take so, it. So, <laughs> Ashley, I, she's the one that you have heard us rave about many a time on the pod about her career and her culinary expertise. You have helped me give my husband a cooking class for his birthday because he's yes. amateur chef. We had you at Bree's birthday, which was incredible. Yep. Yeah. We had hired you and my own family, my in-laws, for a birthday or anniversary gift. I don't remember which one it was at this point. Yep. So, and then I did, I did one for them, too. Yes, and they had their own dinner party. So yep. you're very heavily involved. We yes. love to hire you. We love to have you around. You do an amazing job every single time. Big fan of the Rooters. Oh, <laughs> we're a big fan of yours. <laughs> Thank you. And my mom, huge fan. You had her in, in class for yes. Spanish, right? Yep. yep. And beyond that, she's just a force of nature. She's incredible at her job. She knows Gordon Ramsay. I have met him once. Yes. So your besties, Gordon Ramsay, yep. essentially. He's in my phone. Yeah. So don't ask, but he's there. That is a bigger <laughs> claim to fame than I have ever had and probably ever will have. So give me your version of events, who you are, what your business is, what you have going on. Okay. So yes. Hi, I'm Ashley. Um, I own 417 Devour. It's a personal chef company. Um, I cook for people. I go into their homes and cook for them. In Springfield, no celebrity clients here, but uh, yet. nonetheless, yes, yet, yet, but nonetheless, uh, very entertaining. Um, so that's kind of me. But yeah, I went to culinary school and then did the whole commercial kitchen route, mm -hmm. and then now I'm back here. But um, yeah, went to high school with Hannah, knew Hannah. Actually, I liked you in high school. We didn't have a lot of interaction, but you hung out with a lot of the guys that I was friends with and thought were cool. That so would I was be like, well, she must be cool because <laughs> she hangs out with like the guys that I know. So, and I'm like, they wouldn't hang out with her if she wasn't cool. So I do have largely male interests. So I think that's probably why is, be, it, you know, the whole comic book thing. It doesn't yeah. really go over as well with girls. We're getting there, but you know what? I'm very popular with like the high school male interest group. Yes. So that's my claim to fame. Yeah. Let's go through your interest in food. When did okay. you find your passion for cooking? Was it always there? Yeah. Was so, it seventh grade facts? <laughs> yeah, I think that's funny. That's what the lady in career day says. She's like, you found it in facts. And Which I was like, uh. we need to go back to that because we both just did career day. So we'll come back. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, no. So we lived in next door to my grandparents mm -hmm. and my grandma always cooked. And my mm -hmm. mom, sorry, mom, cannot cook. Okay. Like cuts an onion with a steak knife. Not your mom and I have that in common. Yeah. Like I don't want to eat anything she makes. Right. It's right. It's fine. But mm -hmm. we're, we're just it's not personal. Right. It's not personal. Yeah. Just don't want it. Um, so yeah, but anyway, yeah, my grandma could cook very good cook. Um, that kind of was intriguing, I guess, cause my mom right. didn't cook that much at home or if she did, it just was a lot of simpler stuff. Um, so that was probably like the initial, like, Oh wow, I like this and yeah. I want to know how to do it. And then, um, yeah, I got my first, like, one of my first real jobs was at Big Cedar. Um, oh, yeah. The small little restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Well, I started at McAllister's, okay? okay but then my beginnings. first, right, like, right. real job in a kitchen where you're actually cooking mm -hmm. was at Big Cedar. You're saying McAllister's isn't really cooking? I'm sorry. Oh. It's, there's a lot of stuff that comes out of a bag. Oh, you know what? That's okay. Yeah. We don't expect anything anything more from I that. I mean, start from the bottom. Just give me a spud. <laughs> give me a microwave spud. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Those are actually done in the oven. Oh, okay. So that's gourmet. <laughs> yep. Good that to know. Is. And we brew the tea fresh every day. So. That is. <laughs> yeah. It sticks a culture right there. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, so then after I worked at Big Cedar and then I realized like, oh, wow, there's like a career path in this. Yeah. And it's not obviously just McAllister's right. mm -hmm. style stuff. Um, that really sparked my interest. And then I dual enrolled while I was in high school, went to OTC, did that whole route. And then, um, yeah, went to culinary school in Kansas city. So how was that experience? 
Culinary school is brutal. Um, How many years of education is it? It's three years with the 6,000 hour apprenticeship program. So oh it's full gosh. time for three years. And at the time, right, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Mm -hmm. But then when all my friends are going on spring break and they get Christmas break off and they're coming yeah. home and I'm working over Christmas, I'm working over Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. I don't get a spring break. I didn't get summers off, mm -hmm. which was fine, but I wasn't, I don't yeah. know if I was quite mentally prepared for that. I know. There's a lot of FOMO happening then. Oh, girl, I had the same thing. It was less cool basically but I went to school online because I was working full-time at the bank you know yep. in college and I had this like really strong desire to grow up back whenever I was 17 18 19 yep. and now that I'm 25 I'm like girl what were you doing but I feel whenever like I was going through that I was working full-time I was in school at night just online and I remember like vividly scrolling through Instagram at two o'clock on a Tuesday and seeing everybody at a college pool party and questioning every decision I had ever made that led me up to that point so it's on the one hand, you know, you're making an investment for your future because you're putting in the work now and you yep. know that you, or you hope that eventually it will pay off and that you'll have something financially to show for it yeah. or that you'll be ahead of someone and ahead of where you would have been if you had made a different choice. But there's just something so disheartening about being the only person you feel like not getting the experience. Yep. I just I remember so many times being like, this better be worth it because I, I feel so left out. I feel yeah. so lame. And of course it was nice to have a steady income for sure. when everybody else was broke, but yeah, at the same time, nice. <laughs> everything else, you know, that, that before everyone has the full-time experience when they're like, Oh, let's go do this. Let's go do that. And it would be like a lake day on a Wednesday. And I'm like, I yeah. can't, I can't use PTO for that. I can't do yep. it again. And just feeling like I was like crippling myself socially because I chose to take this one path. But yeah, the FOMO was real. And now I have the exact opposite schedule where, which you can yep. relate to yep. where we'll be having coffee at 11 a.m. on a Tuesday. Just like, what yep. are you doing today? Yep. So you do put in the work at some point and then get to reap the benefits with self-employment if that's your journey. But I heavily relate to that. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything now, mm -hmm. like looking back on it. But for sure, when I was in it, especially during those three years in college, yeah. that was rough. I had a lot of jobs I didn't like too. Yeah. like you're in college, you got to do all the scut work and that kind of stuff in a kitchen. And so it was a little overwhelming and everyone at Big Cedar was so mm -hmm. nice. So I didn't really yeah. experience that there. So then when I was like, probably had a little bit too much of an ego as well, like going into college thinking like, well, I've worked at Big Cedar. Mm -hmm. I've worked all these different oh, stations. Yeah. Like do I you can- you know who Johnny Morris is? Cause I do. It, right. Well, and it was like, I can, you know, do dinner service while we're feeding right. like 600 people. Like I'm, I'm good. We're Insane. good. Like you can't tell me nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I got there and was like, okay. You can't tell me something actually. I yeah. I'm like, please tell me everything you know and humble me quickly yes. because this is, yeah. Ugh. So yeah. Follow up questions <laughs> off the bat. Can you give a reference for what 6,000 hours of apprenticeship looks like? How long did it take you to complete that? And what were your shifts like? So, yeah, it's um, three years mm -hmm. full time. You don't even get wow. a week off. Mm -hmm. It's 40 hours a week. I'm pretty sure I'd have to do the math. But from what I I don't even think we got a full week off to get the 6,000. Um, and then for me, luckily, I got to roll over my big cedar mm -hmm. hours. So I had plenty. Right. But it, we, I still had to work the full time, the three years. So is it similar to the medical field where you just get assigned somewhere or do you have a choice in where you're going or? Yeah. For us, we got to pick if they were an uh, ACF accredited chef. So mm -hmm. an American Culinary Federation accredited chef, which really kind of stinks um, because, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, using my soft words yeah. um, because. She has permission to swear <laughs> just so everyone knows, but she can play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because. A lot of chefs now, they don't do yeah. that, right? Like I would never keep my American Culinary Federation certificate or mm -hmm. achievements up because they don't do anything for me. It's I'm not competing. Just like a political thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to get apprentices to work under me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of chefs don't keep them. And even like really good chefs, they don't use them. Like, mm -hmm. right, they're going to get sous chefs or other people right. coming from other places that, are, that don't need the accreditation either. So mm -hmm. it is kind of hard to find chefs you really want to work for with the accreditation I found. Um, but with that being said, the culinary school was in Kansas city. So yeah. a lot of those chefs were trying to keep it up to date so they could get apprentices. But yeah, we did get to pick as long as they were accredited. Well, that's incredible. Long story short. What was your experience like? <laughs> did you enjoy who you worked under? Yeah, for the most part, I think I had, which right with every job, um, I had a few chefs that I didn't like, but I think I learned more from them honestly yeah. in, in the end than what I did from some of the other ones that I really truly did appreciate the most. But mm -hmm. honestly, like one of my favorite chefs was Mike from big cedar. Um, and that might've just been a, like, I was young. Right. And I looked yeah, up to him and like was the like, very oh. first one that gave you like a taste of this world that you fell in love with. Yeah. So I think that for sure. And then, um, I was working in Seattle. So there's a mm -hmm. lot of chefs out there that oh, I yeah. really like too. Absolutely. But, so yeah. what are the 
what's the hierarchy in a kitchen like? Can you explain Oof. like a professional kitchen? Because my only experience has been a, a buffet in Nixa. Okay. And then Texas Roadhouse. Okay. So my my standing is limited as I imagine the viewers are as well. Yeah. So I've worked pretty high end restaurants. I've never worked Michelin star. So that's a whole mm-hmm. nother like gamut, but you're, you're pretty much the hierarchy is going to be, I guess if you're starting at the top, it's going to be the executive chef. Mm-hmm. That person is going to oversee everything. So like my experiences as a banquet chef, that's pretty much been my, um, my your bread what, and butter. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. So that was what I did when I worked commercial kitchens. Mm-hmm. And then, um, so I was over the one department, but the right. executive chef is over everything and I worked hotels. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of just to give you a little backside there, mm-hmm. but the executive chef's over everything. And then you might have a chef de cuisine, which is just a little higher than a sous chef usually. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you'll have sous chefs. You might have junior sous chefs. Um, and then you'll have line cooks under I that. See. And then the banquet is kind of its own department. So, mm-hmm. but that's who's doing all the in-house catering for hotels and like weddings at Big Cedar and mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. And how, what were the size of the teams that you worked on? A range. Um, like how big of the mm-hmm. teams? Um, well, let's see. So country clubs, we probably have a staff of like 25 mm-hmm. total. Um, and then for just kitchen and then hotels, like the banquet department at a lot of the hotels I worked in has only been like four or five of us. Mm-hmm. And that's on staff. Usually there's only three working at a time. Oh my gosh. Um, But like when you're on the line and you're doing dinner service, it depends on how many stations the kitchen has, but it's one per station. So Mm -hmm. maybe five or six. That's insane. And And then you'll have a sous chef executing plates, like Mm -hmm. taking the plates, wiping them, making sure they all look Mm -hmm. right. And then setting them out. You mentioned that you had done dinner service for 600 people. Yeah. What's that like? Um, Because I struggle to do dinner service for two. Yeah. So that, um, we do a lot of prep in advance, Mm -hmm. right? So- Sorry. Okay. Phone, ca- phone casualty. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that's usually you have a couple other people helping you, but you're mm-hmm. prepping days in advance for that. Okay. So even for weddings, if you're doing a wedding of 600, like we have all the cold food prepped out, all that kind of stuff. And the day of we're going in, we're searing proteins, finishing proteins, mm-hmm. sauces, all that kind of stuff. Makes sense. But yeah. Okay. And then we have tools to help mm-hmm. us execute those. So like we have a plate rack when you're doing salads for 600, mm-hmm. You can put all the lettuce on your plate, get it all particular how you want it, and then you put it on a plate rack that mm-hmm. can hold 500 salads. That is incredible. I've only ever been on the the receiving end of the <laughs> banquet service, so yeah. I've only seen like how well oiled it is whenever it comes out and everything is you know yeah. swept away before you even like can set your fork down, and it's incredible. So being on the other side of that, I did not picture it being two to three people. Yeah, we'll just say. yeah, it's crazy. Let's talk about the kitchen ecosystem. Mm. So I imagine it the way it's portrayed on TV with like the yelling and the drama. Is that how it is? Is that accurate? Yeah, a lot of kitchens anymore. No, I don't think. I think everyone's kind of trying to change that a little mm-hmm. bit. But they're when I that's when I very first started culinary school. I worked for an old school chef. Mm-hmm. Like he would get super angry, pound his fists on the table, break plates, Ooh. throw plates on the ground. I just don't work well in that environment. Don't get me wrong. I can't imagine anybody would. (laughs) Yeah. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I would hope not, Uh but I can work well under pressure and like, I don't need to be Be like praised or coddled or anything like that. I don't need a golden star at the end of my shift. Ducking plates. Yeah. But I don't want to dip, duck, dive and dodge while I'm at work. Like I don't, yeah. Uh Um, and just like the, a kitchen's already stressful, right? You're right. trying to get food out as quickly as you can and make it the most beautiful as you can. And then you have somebody that's just acting a fool. So mm-hmm. that obviously doesn't help. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't think now so much okay. anymore. People are doing that. I know we're really trying to get away from that. Um, and even in upper management, we try to. Because mm-hmm. if you are if you grow up in a kitchen, like me, I was 16 when mm-hmm. I started working. So when you grow up in a kitchen kind of that's that way, it's hard to break those habits. Right. So then sometimes, you know, you lose your cool and you think that's the only way to mm-hmm. handle a situation. You got to yeah figure that out too. Yeah. So do you have any like stress management tips whenever you're in those high pressure situations? Ah, oh, geez. If you're on the line and you're cooking food and you got to, I mean, sometimes you just got to take a beat, but, um, yeah, not really in management. Sometimes I just, just go cry through it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. let your tears get the food. <laughs> yeah. Cry in the walk in. You yeah. can't cry on the line. So I've cried in the walk in at Texas Roadhouse. Oh many yeah. Times. I, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's hard, right? You don't want, as, especially yeah. in a, as a girl, like mm-hmm. there's not that many other females mm-hmm. in the kitchen. So you well, don't want to be. Well, for me, I was, I was a hostess. So we were a dime a dozen. <laughs> there was always one or, one or two of us crying in the walk-in at any given time. Yeah. So it wasn't quite as prestigious as what you've been through. But yeah, yeah I, I can, 
completely understand and respect how you would want to keep like that composure and not show any weakness. Yeah. It must be very difficult. Well, and it's hard, especially as me, like for being younger and having to manage grown men Mm -hmm. and not. Who are not one to be managed. Not one to be managed. And you like yelling at them doesn't help because they like laugh. They're Mm -hmm. like, oh, she's all mad. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. So then you really have to keep your composure and you can't let them see you cry. Yeah. But it's, yeah. How has your experience been working in a field that's historically male? Um, it's been pretty good. I mean, for me, I think I knew what I needed to do to like mm-hmm. move up and move through the ranks. Um, I also, I don't want to say I put in my time cause there's never like enough time mm-hmm. you can put in. You're right. always learning when you're, you know, cooking and doing that stuff. There's so many different cuisines, but, um, yeah, I was really just dedicated to working. So I knew to get ahead. Yeah. I'm going to have to put in the most hours. I'm going to be the first one here, mm-hmm. the last one to leave. I'm going to do all the crappy work that no one else wants to do Mm -hmm. and just get through it. So in that regard, it's been good. And I think working for the right people obviously helped once I was with chefs that we mutually respected each other Mm -hmm. and um, that made a much better environment. But do you think it's ironic that there's such a stigma around like women belong in the kitchen, but then if you look at more of the career path in the culinary world, it tends to be pretty heavily male. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the kids at Career Day even said that, like, wait, what? He's like, it's all men. Which is so funny because that's the whole joke is like, get me. back in the kitchen, make me a sandwich. Yep. But then you see all of the top chefs and everything. Like, it's a it's a respected male profession, but as a roller on the house, it's like, that's a woman's job. So yeah. what's your take on all of that? I don't know. It's tough because, like, I've worked, I want to say, so when I was at, you know, Big Cedar, mm-hmm. there was only a handful of female chefs that I worked with and that were in upper management like we might maybe had a few line cooks that were females but upper management chefs that I've worked with has only been one or two wow so that was hard to like be like oh my gosh am I gonna be able to do any of this like are they just gonna keep you keep you down kind of thing um but yeah it's interesting and I don't really know why but I almost wonder and I hate to kind of say this because it's probably controversial but I almost wonder too if there's not a lot of ladies that Mm -hmm. want to put in that many hours Mm -hmm. like I won an award in college at the place I worked for working like 60 or 75 hours a week on a regular basis and I can't remember what the hours were for sure but like for my two-week paycheck they Mm -hmm. were like this is the most hours ever worked and I won some award which was great but I'm like I don't know is that was it worth it did I get it I mean that paycheck's long gone now (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah she's done and gone but um so I, I don't know. I don't it know if it's, yeah, it is interesting. And I don't really know why. So. Well, it's, it's always interesting to talk about. And I was joking with my father-in-law because he was the one who actually pointed that out to me. And he's like, would you ever wonder why, you know, there are women are supposed to be the cooks in the household, but it's, it's men that are all the famous chefs. And I said, probably because women don't need awards and praise for the things that just need to be done and yeah. men do. Yeah. But I just think it's, it's like a funny little thing to observe that the career path is so different demographically yeah. than the stereotype. Yeah, that's true. And I think also in a commercial kitchen, you're, I mean, you're toting around 50 pound bags of mm-hmm. flour. And oh, it's not, an, it's hot in there. Pots. There's fire. There's yeah. like, it's a, not an easy, even just like I said, at the, the chain kitchen that I Yo, worked in, 100%. there's so much being done all the time. It's dangerous. It's, yep. it's really not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So I think maybe that too, like mm-hmm. it's just not a super glamorous profession mm-hmm. either when you're in a commercial kitchen. So maybe that's yeah. part of it, but well, speaking of glamorous, now that you are officially more on the private side, yes. take me through a week in your life now. Okay. It's pretty smooth. I like butter. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. Um, it's definitely more glamorous for sure. Um, so I have two clients Monday, two on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yes. One Thursday, one Friday. Okay. And what um, does the client entail? So each one's a little different. It kind of depends on their dietary restrictions and mm-hmm. like what they want out of the service. Right. Um, but typically it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Um, my favorite things for the week. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like glamorized meal prepping essentially. Um, and then if they're an AM client, I serve them lunch while mm-hmm. I'm there. And then if they're a PM client, I serve them dinner that day. Everyone has one day during the week and then it repeats. So I've had the same clients for about two years now. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah. And that is completely a testament to your service, your skills to have that kind of retention. Yeah. What is your ideal client like? Do they, are they hands on? Are they hands off? Are they... I don't know. It's kind of funny because I have a mix of both and I love the days when no one's home and yeah. I just go into their house and I cook all their food and I stock the mm-hmm. fridge and I can listen to a podcast. That's, like that's everyone's typically dream. what I'm listening to is you and Brie um, while I'm cooking. And then, but I do have some clients that sit, you know, at their kitchen in their bar stools right in front of me and we chat the whole time. Mm-hmm. So I love that, so that too. That would be my worst nightmare. 
I, I don't know. It's nice because coming from a commercial kitchen where you, you know, maybe only get to talk to the guy next yeah. to you and you don't really care for him, but yeah, he's yeah. next to you all day long and you're in a super confined space. Right. Um, I don't know. It's nice. And it's definitely nice to um, be able to build the relationships with your mm -hmm. clients and then see them enjoying the food you're making. Yeah. Cause when you're true. in a commercial kitchen, you're not seeing anyone enjoy Like sure we get responses right. back, but some compliments we, to the chef. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Like, we're, we're not seeing anyone eat it and enjoy yeah. it. And it's kind of hard to lie about it. If I see you spit it out on your plate in front yeah, of me. Yeah. That's true. That's really true. <laughs> Which I've never seen. So that's good. What but. is your favorite meal to make? Do you have a, any favorites mm. or is it something different every time? I don't know. So I like pasta making mm -hmm. more because that's therapeutic, I think. But honestly, I think that's why I love savory, mm -hmm. which I'm sure pastry chefs would be like, oh my gosh, but we get to make so much different stuff too. I just right. don't know how to do it. Um, but mm -hmm. I, yeah, I just kind of like to make a bunch of different stuff. So it keeps well, me on my toes. And I've had your, was it butternut squash ravioli that you made for Austin? Mm -hmm. Yes. For Austin's Incredible. birthday. Incredible. The creme brulee, also incredible. Um, the wedge salad, right? Or top salad? What's it I called? Th I think we did a wedge for... I've had both, I think. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. They were both incredible. Okay. However, um, you did bacon wrap dates. Yes. I ate about 70% of them yep. on my husband's birthday. Yep. Um, what else? I've had your short rib. Is that what you did? I did short ribs for Bree's birthday. Yes. Yes. That's what it was. Okay. Um, I can't oh remember my gosh, what the... I did for the mains at your in-laws. I don't know, but I know it was good. I think it was, was some a kind of a meat, dish. a meat thing because they, it might have been a pasta, I guess. Yeah, because I think your sister in law asked for the like sauce recipe, and I yeah. want to say it's a, it was like my tomato sauce, like my creamy tomato Maybe. sauce. It was like a spicy pasta. Um, it was a, it was a, yeah, it was a, it had to have been. A I pasta have the content. It was a, I, <laughs> I know, I probably do. Too. I know. Um. Anyway, it was all amazing. And then what was the, um, the dish that you made as the, uh, or the appetizer for Breeze that was so good. It was the little, I can't think of the word right now. Risotto? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was I did a butternut insane. squash. Insane. So delicious. I could have eaten that by yep. the pound. Yep. It was heavenly. Like it was the you you could have served that in like three times the bowl that you did and I would have not stopped until it was gone. Like I was being yeah. that person that was like, no, I'm not done. don't take it away from me. Yeah. I'm still snacking. <laughs> but it was incredible. So everything you've made has been just divine. Good. Thank and you. I look forward to Sunday. Yes. So Sunday. Tell me what we're thinking for Sunday. Okay. For those who don't know it, Sunday is the day of the giveaway that we did in conjunction with 4 and 7 Devour. Yes. So we're doing an official little brunch with a couple listeners that we announced the winners yesterday. Yes. But take me through what you're thinking. Okay. So it'll be pretty much a standard brunch. Mm -hmm. There'll be bacon, candied bacon maybe. Mm. Mm. Um, and then I'm thinking doing a sweet potato biscuit. Amazing. With um, a mushroom gravy. So biscuits and gravy, but a spin on it, right? And then probably a crab cake, eggs, Benny. Ooh. Mm. Um, I actually have the notes in my phone because I've been going through it too. Unfortunately, your phone is on the floor. So yeah, won't. it died earlier. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it jumped off the yeah. side oh, of I the Oh, I thought sofa. you meant the battery died. Oh, and no, I was no, like, no. well, that's really it unfortunate. Just, it was gone. No, she, this time I'm more concerned about the battery being dead <laughs> than your phone like being cracked on the yeah, floor. Yeah, no. She just. Like, you can't get on the phone. <laughs> um, there will be for sure uh, some sort of avocado toast. Insane. It might be on a bagel. Mm. Um, locks. Which it, I just learned what that was. Oh, salmon locks? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I had no idea what that was. And I always saw bagels and like a bagel and locks or something. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what does that even mean? And I just pretended like, oh, yeah, yeah. And then. I love it. Mm, it's so great. <laughs> I mean, I'm somebody whose bagel culture uses the word schmear because I'm so used to like Panera and Einstein's. Oh, yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not highly cultured in the bagel universe. So. It's okay. Locks is a new addition to my vocabulary. Yeah, I say bagel wrong. I say bagel. I, it's yeah. hard for me to say bagel. <laughs> I have to try. Yeah. So. Did you ever watch the show Community? No. Uh -uh. You should. There's a character that like pronounces bagel like bagel. So yeah. at least you're not bagel. Oh, I would love it. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah. Um, is there any representation of your career on TV or in the media that you think is correct and one that's like not at all? Mm, I, th I think the bear did a pretty good depiction mm -hmm. of what it's like. Um. Some of it obviously is a little dramatic and yeah. then they get into like his whole family stuff. So. Right. But kitchen wise, I think that's pretty accurate. Otherwise, I don't know if I watch a ton that's not. Mm -hmm. I think I have such a good understanding of what it is. So I don't watch a ton of stuff that's like kitchen related. I always wonder that. Like people who work in the medical field, do they watch Grey's Anatomy? People who work in different, like do you watch things that are in your industry? I like the, and I'm probably going to butcher this, but there's a Netflix series. I want to say it's like Top Chef. Mm -hmm. I watched the one where like 
Timothy Hollinsworth or so I'm probably m messing up all this, but I've watched the one where he won and it was like a Thanksgiving episode, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but that was pretty accurate. Okay. And that's almost more if I, it's been a hot minute, but I think they, it was almost more like mystery basket stuff. Mm -hmm. They got presented a oh, few yeah, things yeah. what they could do with it. And then they got to go and do whatever they wanted. But, okay. um, yeah. So Interesting. I don't watch a ton, but. Okay. Last question about your current career before yes. we get into some other things. Okay. What, what is it like to book you? So how far are you booked if someone wants to do a party? Cause you're not taking on active clients weekly right now. Yeah, no weekly. I'm pretty much booked. Um, Woo. And yeah. Booked and busy. Yes. Um, and then parties I book, I'm booked for 2024. Mm -hmm. So, which is great. Um, that is nuts. It's yes. February 13th. I know. And it happened that way too last year where I booked so far out. Uh -huh. Um, and I try not to, but then it just keeps yeah. coming in. And so it's hard, but um, yeah, so for 2024, I'm fully booked. And then I also do culinary consulting. So that's really nice. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and that's more of like weekends mm -hmm. kind of thing. But um, so unfortunately for anyone, this is not a service that you will be able to attain this year. <laughs> yeah, probably not. I do have a cancellation list and things like that. Uh -huh. Usually that's a little tricky because if they're mm -hmm. canceling, it's usually like a last minute emergency yeah. type situation. Um, but I do have a cancellation list. I have a website, which is 417 Devour. You can go on there and mm -hmm. put in for a contact form. Um, and then I'm on Instagram and you can DM me there too. But mm -hmm. other than that, 2024 is pretty booked. And you can so. be sweet talked into maybe adding a party here and there if the price is right. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. there's a significant bribe made, yeah. your calendar might mysteriously open up. For sure. Well, good yeah. for you for setting boundaries too, because I know that that's something we've discussed a lot in our yeah. business owner to business owner chats. Yes. That it's very hard to find a line because you always technically could do more, but yeah at what point does it cease to be beneficial to you? And I actually saw a really good quote last night on Pinterest during my nightly Pinterest scroll. And it said something like, don't push yourself to the point of being exhausted and burnt out in the name of give it your best effort because at some point it ceases to be your best effort. Yep. And I was like, oh my gosh. Truth. Because I always think like, oh, I'm, I'm giving it my best. That means yeah. giving it like every fiber of my being. And so at some point, you know, the 10 hour days and the late nights and not taking weekends off and yeah. everything that stops being your best because you're so burnt out. You're not creative. You're not refreshed. So I think that you, I've learned the lesson, but to see someone put the words like so succinctly yeah. that it ceases to be your best. I was, my jaw was on the floor. Yeah. And I think for me too, like working in commercial kitchens where you don't have weekends off, you mm -hmm. don't have holidays off, you don't have a day off during the week, you, you never get, you know. Mm -hmm. So now for me where I can set my own schedule, I work all week, mm -hmm. right? So I don't want to work every single weekend and right. every single oh, holiday. Um, and I know that's frustrating, I'm sure, for some people, but it's kind of like if you work a nine yeah. to five, are you going to go into the office also Saturday, Sunday, right. Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm -hmm. Christmas Eve? I don't know. Maybe you would. Mm -hmm. But that's the luxury of being but, your own boss and having yeah. your own business. Like you took the gamble for a reason. And, and part of the payoff is that you get to decide what hours you keep. And, yep. you know, what if it works better to work during the week, then yep. more power to you. Yep. Because I would not personally want to give up all my holidays and weekends the rest of my life. Yep. But sometimes it is nice to be able to spread it out. Like I like to do my errands during the week because I can. And then oh, for sure. I would rather work like a Saturday and then do yep. my errands on a Tuesday because mm -hmm. it just tends to be less overwhelming and stressful. Yes. And I've gotten so spoiled by not having to run errands on an actual weekend day that whenever I do, I just get so like culture shocked. I am mad if I have to go to yeah, Costco I'm on hot. a Saturday. I'm stressed. I'm, I mean, it. the parking lot's a mess. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in an accident. Yeah. Or someone's going to hit me when I come oh. out with my cart. I mean, I'm just, it's not it for me. Do you me. ever do like a last minute like foray into like a TJ Maxx on a Saturday and you're like, we need a second plague? I think any time I drive anywhere on a Saturday mm -hmm. in Springfield, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, we have this many residents? Yes. Where I'm are like, they all where, coming from? Where does everyone live? And like, that's because my main like <laughs> driving is done like during the week when people are in an office. Yep. So yep. I will say it's changed a little bit since COVID and everything happened because I think people are more flexible with how they can work and yeah. you know remote work and everything. But it is always a shock whenever I find myself driving in rush hour and I'm like, you know what? This was my my own fault. I didn't have to be yeah. traveling at this time. And I, the fact that I chose to is on me. It's on me. Yeah. Whenever <laughs> I schedule a meeting that's at 8 a.m. and I'm driving with everybody else, I'm like, where where's the traffic coming from? Yeah. Like, this was this one was on me. So I um do take responsibility for my own actions. <laughs> but what are your favorite and least and favorite parts about self-employment? Oh, geez. Um, taxes. Only because that's coming up. No. Don't <laughs> mention it. I know I'm getting all of my um, forms in from all the different businesses I've worked with. And I'm like, I don't want to look. I, I know. Look. I'm I like, look. I don't want to see this. Um, no, I don't know. It's kind of tough. I feel like it kind of hops around a little bit. 
my, my favorite part is genuinely like my clients, like yeah. getting to see them build relationships with them. I truly love that. That's not anything I really thought of mm -hmm. being a part of the career kind of right. thing. Um, and then probably the hardest is just doing all of it. Right. Yeah. Like I, I know Hannah does do a very good job at taking some pictures for me and that kind of stuff. But otherwise, I mean, I run my social media, I mm -hmm. run the website myself, I yeah. do all that stuff. And I obviously had never done it before mm -hmm. until I started my business. So it's a learning curve. So that probably is just like doing it all, taking mm -hmm. the phone calls, all that stuff. Do you ever see yourself hiring an assistant or anyone to help you out? Yeah, I would love to hire someone, honestly, to cook, to mm -hmm. take on clients, but um, I haven't really put too many feelers out there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see maybe in the next year or so. Yeah. Because I know I have some people reaching out consistently mm -hmm. like, hey, when are you going to get to us? When are you going to get to us? So yeah. um, I would love to. I just can't duplicate myself just yet. Unfortunately, yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. When science cloning. catches up. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, if anyone wants to sponsor, <laughs> yeah. it'll cost you um, a, a penny, but you'll get a whole, mm -hmm. a whole private chef, a whole Ashley yep. to yourself. Yep. Which would be incredible. I would do that um, should I win the lottery. Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. Let's talk about your favorites right now. Okay. We do a thing called a report. Okay. So we talk about what you are reading, eating, playing, obsessing, recommending, and treating. So we're going to go through Ooh. both of those things okay. um, for either of us. So what are you reading right now, if anything? I don't know. This. I mean, it's never boring, but mm -hmm. um, the Bible. Ooh. I've been listening to it on audio really? because I've read it. Mm -hmm. Um. But I was a lot younger. Yeah. I was like in high school probably when mm -hmm. I read the whole thing. And then now I want to like really get, get back, back into, into it. it. And um, that's always a journey, right? But I read it cover to cover as like a, it was a thing, a challenge for yeah. us in confirmation class when we went through it in the sixth grade. But I haven't done it as, a, as an adult. It's more like in the context of devotionals or as I'm yep. doing a Bible study. And I'm guilty of being that kind of like Bible reader where I'm like, all right, God, tell me what I need to hear. Like yep. open it now <laughs> and yeah. like trying to use like a horoscope and see what yep. goes on. And sometimes, sometimes it's exactly what you need. Yes. But I'm like, that's not probably the best way to study it. So I, yeah. I would love to challenge myself to do something like that. Yeah. Do you think and the audio book has been helpful? Yeah. I just won't sit down and read mm -hmm. it and I'm in the car so much or I'm mm -hmm. able to cook when no one's home. So I can yeah, like true. pop in an AirPod and listen to it. So that's been yeah. pretty much all I've been reading lately because it's going to take a while. Yeah. How, <laughs> how far into it are you? Oh, geez. Not very far. Um, I'll have to sing the song to figure out what I know. What I'm like, bad. and it does, it started to jump around. Mm -hmm. So then I had to bring it back. But like, mm -hmm. I want to say, cause what's the first Genesis? Genesis. Exodus? So I'm like, I'm on to the, like the third Leviticus. Yes. Okay. The third, whatever the third chapter in the is, song sorry. in the song. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I really respect that. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. What are you eating right now? Oh, geez. So actually I'm not eating refined carbs right now. You did tell me that. And I, I've been praying for you. I know. So that's rough. Um, can you tell us what a refined carb is? Yeah. So like pastas, um, <gasps> rice. I'm clutching my pearls for you potatoes. Mm -hmm. Do you notice bread. a difference in how you feel? Yeah. So I get my blood work done and mm -hmm. that's really why I'm, my fasted sugars were just a little high. So mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to nip it in the butt. It's nothing crazy. It's not yeah. like I'm going to croak or anything. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, it's always good to keep an eye on that stuff while you can, like yeah. while you're young and while it's still able to be changed pretty easily versus having 50 years of, you know, refined carbs and <laughs> yeah, and then being bad like, things oh, in your belt. Yeah. Your doctor's like, actually, yeah, you are going to croak. So yeah. Makes sense. Um, but it, yeah, nothing too crazy. So um, what am I eating now a lot? Any obsessions? Any like favorite foods? I make guacamole quite often. I love guacamole. Like just, you know. Ironically. Dip. I'm not eating chips. So I'm eating it with uh, like bell peppers and stuff. I've seen but, people talk about that. I've also seen, what was it? Someone said, oh, I forgot what it was, but it was like a, it was some kind of a substitute for a chip that looked like it was really oh. good. It might've been an air fried vegetable or something. Oh, so hmm. I don't know. I'll have to pull it back up because I saved it on TikTok with the intention of showing Austin so yeah. he could make it for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I usually do to drop hints. Like <laughs> instead of saving recipes for myself, I just send it straight to him Yeah, and then he'll do it because <laughs> he is so much better than I am. But I, um, whenever I got my blood work done, cause I do annual physicals, yeah. then they were like, oh my gosh, you're, I don't know if they're triglycerides or like whatever your, oh, your fats yeah. in your blood, they're like, they're so good. Like you're so healthy. Do you have a lot of omega threes yeah. to take a pill. And the answer is that the only thing I comfortably can make is a salmon. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I have salmon like once or twice a week and then I'll put like avocado on everything, avocado yeah. toast. It's just like the only two things that I enjoy slash can make. So yeah. my blood work was great because of it, mm -hmm. because of lack of other options. That's what we like. I know. I'm like, you know what? I'll take it. A win is a win. Yep. Okay. So playing music or podcasts? Mm, podcasts. Mm -hmm. I like to listen to something 
I like music. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not a monster. Um, not a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think I find myself, I don't know. I feel like podcasts or listening to someone talk, even mm -hmm. if it's not like self-help or motivational, it's almost it like makes com me company. Yeah. But it also makes me feel like I'm being productive. Yeah. In a I weird agree. way. I don't know. If I that's think it occupies normal. more of your brain because I like to listen yeah. to music, but I, I go through phases pretty heavily. Like I'll go through phases where I almost am too overwhelmed to listen to a podcast. Like I have to have music because yeah. I zone out more to it. And then I'll go through phases where I feel like maybe I have more mental capacity. So I like to listen to things and I don't know why it alternates, but right now I'm back in a podcast phase where I mm. want to listen to different things and I have my favorites. Like whenever I'm getting ready, I'll watch yeah. things on YouTube and then whenever I'm driving, I'll listen to it. And I just came out of a long music phase where it's like, you almost just don't have the mental like real estate yeah. to listen to someone talk, like process it and keep up. Yep. So music is easier to just like lose yourself in. Yes, for but sure. But what are you listening to podcast wise? I know you said you listen to ours. Uh, yes. Yeah, so I listen to Hannah Bree. Um, there's also another local girl and I might butcher her last name mm -hmm. but morgan peggle yes keeping up with cash like yes so i like, love morgan yeah i like hers um i, I like that she's local mm -hmm. too obviously um and she's incredible she talks about the gamut right like mm -hmm. she goes from all over the place i like that and obviously she just had i think billy dove on last week mm -hmm. or the week before maybe yep. i don't know but so love that um and then this is probably gonna make me sound like an old lady but i don't know the name of their podcast but it's jennifer and pumps Mm. And they're like these two middle old middle aged women. I love it. They're already. both like in their fifties, mm -hmm. I want to say, and they just crack me up. They're hilarious. Okay. It's probably not the most appropriate topics That's of fine. conversation. We're grown. Um, but if yeah, if I just want a good laugh and mm -hmm. know I need to like just veg out and do that, mm -hmm. that's who I usually That's turn incredible. on. So I think it's I've had it podcast okay. with Jennifer and Pumps. Good to know. Is it lifestyle yeah. or just kind of whatever? Oh, geez. No, they just get, they get a bunch of different guests okay. on and they talk about just like more pretty comedy. much like that's how they start the podcast is like, what have you had it this with this week? And then they okay. say what they've had it with. I actually love that. Yeah. Maybe and we'll then, do that at the end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we've had it with. <laughs> okay. So those are great podcasts. I'm obviously biased. I do love Morgan. She's fantastic. And I think that um, I'm very happy that you're listening to ours. Yes. I remember one time you texted me and you're like, I'm listening to your podcast and you're funny. Oh my God. I was so flattered. I was like, I, cause multiple episodes I have been like rolling laughing and it's like your quick little Ugh. like insert <laughs> comments that are so, and Brie just kind of like glazes by them Brie's sometimes. So used to me. Yeah. And I'm just like, how is she not l dying laughing? She's, she's, well, we just, we just be talking, you know, we'll, know. we'll get into the zone and we'll just be chit chatting and I just yeah. throw my comments in. And I think the same thing has happened yeah. to Austin because I'll be like commenting on things he's saying and he doesn't even flinch. I'm like, do you? hear me oh, it's pure gold i'm getting I mean, my best material yes, here you're punching out pure gold I'm, in these little i'm, I'm like churning and burning here and nobody's yep. laughing at it yeah. so whenever you said that i was so affirmed i was like oh yes. my gosh no i was, I was like flattered. do i need to do a reaction video to me listening because <laughs> I i'm like i'm died. dying laughing here no that's like mm -hmm. my favorite compliment because i just talk and i think mm -hmm. i think i'm funny but oh, also hilarious. It, yes. i'm biased because i yep. would say it if i didn't think yep. it's funny you know so i think everyone probably does to an extent but it was yeah. nice to hear that from an outside perspective to be honest i probably screenshot it and kept it because i have it <laughs> Hang I have a your folder office. in my um, camera roll called Podcast yeah. Happies, and oh, it's I literally it. screenshotted compliments yeah. from people because sometimes you just get so, yeah, I don't know, you just get in your own head. I'm like, do people listen? Is this super weird? So whenever I do get compliments, and we also have a lot of silent listeners. Like we have yeah. roughly like 150 to 200 listeners every week, but we hear from seven of them, which is totally fine because I don't really comment on podcasts that I listen to. Yeah, But whenever people do reach out, I'm so like, oh, you mean it? You listen? Like, I'm so happy. Yeah. So that always does go a long way, but... Okay, moving along with the report, what are okay. you obsessing over? This oh, can be anything. Man. Like shows, people, um, skincare, anything. Obsessing. This is a tough one. Also, I should preface that you weren't given any of these questions beforehand. So everything that we've okay. talked this about has just off been the cuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> show up. I said, we're gonna talk about you. And you said, okay. And then mm -hmm. you got here and I said, okay, I have questions actually. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Obsessing probably vacation mm. like I have spring break off Ooh, so we're we going I'm nowhere really but I'm just obsessing over yeah. the time and knowing that I have it off and that I can go do whatever I want yeah. with my dog yeah um literally so, yeah literally with my dog yeah <laughs> <laughs> like with my yeah. fur animal yes. dog <laughs> yes the, the canine <laughs> yes yes and tell mm. us about your dog um his name's Ozzy mm. he's currently in the running for America's favorite pet he is he is um, I voted 
Good. He has to make the top 12 by the 15th or <laughs> <Yeah>. I lose. <laughs> or he loses. He it's loses. fine. And, and mine didn't raise a loser. <laughs> yeah. So. And that can't happen mm-hmm. in my household. So he'll be up for adoption mm-hmm. if anyone. No, I'm kidding. Yes, stay tuned. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he's a little Frenchie. He's a blue fawn Frenchie. Love him to death. I mean, cute. that's pretty much it. And he's he said just... he's very sniffly, like kind of loud, right? With his... mm. Oh, yeah. He okay. like snorts like a little piglet. That's like good. he's always... Yeah, making noises and rooting around the house. I have that issue with Austin a lot. (laughs) And we're working on it, but that's okay. Unfortunately, there's a shocking lack of training classes for men. Yeah. In comparison to for dogs. Yeah. So if anyone has any recommendations, then let me know because I've got some housebreaking. Do you ever like think, okay, I've got notes for like, (laughs) obviously you're not married, but anyone who's listening, like my mother-in-law, you did a great job, but I have notes. Oh. About my husband. Yeah. He's amazing. He's fantastic. He's, you know. I think he hung the moon, but I think that he could learn to maybe hang up his clothes as well. So yeah, that would be nice. I mean, I yeah, yeah. There's yeah, people yeah. in my past life that I would imagine I for sure have notes. <laughs> and I have notes for their mother for sure. An exit survey. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I would love that. Can yeah. you send it? I, even if it's anonymous, I don't care. Yeah, please that, send that, it. That would I would be great. love to fill it out. You know what? Mm. I I have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Continuing. What are you recommending to people? Oh, geez. I think honestly anything local Mm -hmm. like I try to support anything local um we got some urban grounds right here as always yeah it's It's empty so I know I'm so sorry and I have my chameleon coffee here for today shout it out um I do like it they sell it at mama jeans Mm -hmm. which is local Mm -hmm. so we're supporting local support yes um but yeah honestly nothing in particular I think it's just whatever I'm using or doing at the moment Mm -hmm. I try to recommend like I have a local guy that's refinishing a hutch for me he also makes cutting boards shout him out um cane woodworking all right so that's pretty cool um but anything yeah really that's what I recommend anything that that I'm using or doing though I know Mother's Day is coming up so if anyone's mom is into you know the culinary arts maybe yeah some cutting board he does some I mean beautiful cutting boards I'll Mm -hmm. try to um like post him on my Instagram or something or send him to Hannah but um, he does beautiful cutting boards and also charcuterie boards. I mean, mm. awesome charcuterie boards. Um, and they're, I, I think they're pretty reasonable for a local made, yeah. oh, absolutely. like solid. That's a great gift. Austin's 30th yeah. birthday is coming up. And I can say this because he does not listen to the podcast frequently or ever. I don't know, really yeah. which is fine. Cause I like to talk about him. Yeah. So I would love to get him a custom cutting board. He has one right yeah. now that was custom made that we have to finish with walrus oil every time we use it. Oh, wow. And here's the thing about me, which is probably going to make you cringe, but I don't like high maintenance kitchen no. equipment uh, or yeah. anything that really requires a lot of effort on my part in the kitchen is not yeah. for me. The cast iron won't clean it. If Austin mm. wants to cook with a cast iron, that's his responsibility. Yeah. I'll do every single other dish in the entire kitchen, but the cast iron, he's so particular about it because I, I am – confused as to why I can't use soap on it <laughs> you're like yeah. don't <laughs> Ashley's eyes switching. yeah but he's, yeah he's like no leave the seasoning like have you seen that meme where the the girl scrubbed like all of the black off of the cast oh, iron and, and she was shiny like, yeah, yeah. she's like I cleaned it for him he was so dirty yeah that's me I'm like yeah can I throw it in the dishwasher I, if it's not dishwasher safe it does not belong in my household yeah I was like a frozen dinner girl until I met Austin and now mm-hmm. you know my grocery bill has throupled yeah it's not good <laughs> Some would say tripled, <laughs> yeah. but it's just, it's definitely, he likes everything to be very high end. Like he has so much fun cooking and he likes to go the extra mile with everything just as a hobby. But he has this one cutting board that like is so obtuse. It doesn't fit into the sink yeah. appropriately. So every time I wash it, it's like spraying every which way it's yeah. all over the counter. It floods. We have to oil the board because it's like a certain kind of wood and I do it because I love him, mm-hmm. but in, we we're getting, we're getting love, close ladies. to the threshold. <laughs> like if we're yeah. up, we're up at the line there. So, you know, yeah. like you said, the things we do for love, but that would be a great gift for him. Maybe I'll look yeah. into that. Yeah. And butcher block oil is pretty mm-hmm. good because you can just get a whole thing of it. it. He's wanting a set of knives oh, for his, okay. for something for a yeah. gift. I didn't know those things were so expensive. So expensive. Um, I actually like, especially if you're getting into culinary, I recommend Victor Knox knives because mm-hmm. they're pretty cheap. Yeah. Um, and they're lightweight, but for him, I would probably recommend, I use Kangshin knives. Okay. You can actually get like the home Drop set the link. at Costco. Okay. Okay. Um, they're super sharp. They're Japanese steel mm-hmm. recommended by. Well, for reference, before I was chefs. married to him, mm-hmm. I was rocking with a set from a garage sale for nice. about Love four it. bucks. Yeah. Used dull as yep. can be. Couldn't cut a lemon, but you know what? 
if I had an intruder, it would bounce off of me. <laughs> like it wouldn't go, it would like poke him. That would, would be about it. So that's funny. not really safe, but you know, you have to have some of those things for your kitchen and yeah. I wasn't cooking anyways. So yeah. I think my most used appliance would be like a toaster. Yeah. So important. Big, yeah. Big ego girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anywho, um, what are you, what are you treating? Oh, treating. Mm-hmm. Like any treats, even any special hmm. little a treat yourself Friday moment, any services, um, I do get my, which it's been a while, so don't judge. Um, we're far away. That's, that's good. By, by design. Yeah. You guys stay over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> don't come in closer. <laughs> yeah. No zooming in. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I get my eyelashes. Like, what do they call that? Like tinted uh, and yeah, lifted, yeah, lift and, lift and tint. tint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I get my eyebrows done. That's mm-hmm. about all I do for like treat myself. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't like to wear makeup to work. Yeah. Shout out your lash girl. Um, Kendall. Four and seven glam co. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. Amazing. Yep. So thank you. Thank you very much for that's keeping me cool. looking good. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much. Would that be your, your beauty splurge if you had to pick like one thing to never give up? Yeah. And I do like a massage every now and then. Well, I can imagine you're probably on your feet holding this stuff all the time. Yeah. And I start I, getting middle back pain like two minutes into washing dishes. So I can only imagine. Yeah. Um, so those things mm-hmm. I would splurge on. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. If I had yeah. to give up one thing, it would be a really, really close tie between Botox and nails because I've been Ooh, getting both yeah. for several years and nails. It's at the point that if I didn't have nails on, I would think that there was some kind of a deformity with my hands because it's yeah. become so much a part of my, yes, my physique. I used to wear acrylics all through high school. Mm-hmm. And then when I went into commercial kitchens, they were like, you can't have your nails done. Mm. I was like, you're telling me what? You're like changing your whole career path. Yeah, I literally thought about it. Well, I that like, thought I'm going to go back yeah, to accounting. I was like, are you sure? Cause yeah. like they look pretty good to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Do you have a problem with slaying? In this kitchen? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, we can't look good and yeah. cook. Like what's yeah. the problem? Mm-hmm. Um, Sounds misogynistic if you ask me. (laughs) For sure. They hate women. Yes, they do. So yeah, so I've given up nails a long time ago. Do you have any nerve endings left in your fingers? No, I I can pretty much touch fire and not feel anything. (laughs) Unfortunate, but really cool. I've cut some fingertips off before. I mean, that's part of it too. And I have no feeling in in those areas. Do you have any any cool scars, or it's mostly healed? Um, Yeah, you can't really see it, but I literally cut like half my thumb off. Oh my gosh. Um, it cut like the nail and everything. Who needs the thumb anyways? Yeah, you know? no. So I, it, but you know, it happens. In case an impromptu game of heads up seven, it breaks out, then you're good to go. Yeah. You don't need yeah. it. Um, and obviously I wash my hands a lot because I'm doing everyone's dishes. So yeah. my hands are Makes all Makes one of us. <laughs> no. Mine are, mine are smooth because I don't wash them frequently. <laughs> it's fine. I need but, to get on that yeah. then. <laughs> Stop washing your hands 2024. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. Um, Austin, one time we have one of those, Um, what's the thing called where you slide the potato down it? What's that? Mandolin. A that's mandolin. what I cut half my oh, finger off on. Oh, that's what happened to him. Yep. And if anyone who doesn't know, a mandolin is like, it lays somewhat flat, like kind of at yeah. a, maybe like a 30 degree angle. Yeah. And you take a, is it just potatoes or anything you want to slice? Anything you want to slice, yeah. You take it and hold it, and you're supposed to wear. He has anti like, oh, cut like a gloves. steel glove, or and then whatever. he also has something where you're supposed to like stick the potato onto this thing. It looks almost like, like a, a guard. Yes, yeah. And then he didn't use either of those things. I He's running either. his hand down it, and there's a blade, so you just kind of like do this motion if yep. you you're watching it. <laughs> if not, I, I don't have any good descriptors for you. But you slide the potato <laughs> along the thing, and it cuts little slices into the bowl underneath it. He was doing that and it got too close and he cut the, like the fleshy part off of one of his fingers. Oh, just like, so he was flat. I don't know what like the, flat yeah. handling. <laughs> he was doing not what you're supposed to do. Okay. He likes to go in no tutorial just yeah. off of pure instinct. Like yeah. any, any man would mm-hmm. is just to note that inherent. I can do this mm-hmm. and I don't need instruction. Yeah. He was doing that and it mostly works out for him, but this time it did not because the, the tip of his finger did end up in the potatoes. Mm-hmm. So I had to take him to my grandma's house because she is a retired nurse. And I'm like, Aww. you know what? Once a nurse, always a nurse. Yep. So this is one of the four times in our five year relationship that he's ever let me drive him. And he had a t-shirt like wrapped around his hand and he's, I mean, he's holding it up mm. so it doesn't bleed. And that's the only time he's let me transport him. And it was five minutes down the road to my grandma's house and she got him all bandaged up and stitched up and he was good to go. Yep. Then we came back home and we did find the, the tip of his flesh in the potatoes. So, Oh yeah. Yeah. Nasty. That's, that's brutal when yeah. you see that. Yeah. Luckily I'm some, I'm pretty not squeamish. Yeah. So I took it out, threw it away. We made the potatoes. It was I, fine. I'm not squeamish if it's someone else, which maybe that's yeah. like weird, but when it's me, I'm mm-hmm. like, Oh my God, I'm bleeding. Like get, I can't look at it. Ooh, I feel like I'm almost better with myself. See, isn't that but weird? I don't know why. Like with needles, especially yeah. I can handle it with myself. I can't handle it. If I'm watching like a movie and they're going to draw blood, I'm like, <gasps> but yeah. for me, I don't care. Yeah. Like if I had to stick someone else with a needle, I think I, I could it. do it. Oh, I could not. But if someone, if I had to be like, do it to myself, I'd be like, Oh my God, yeah. no, I can't. It's going to hurt. I don't know why I'm okay with it. I think for me, I'm like, okay, I can like. I know it's not painful because I'm feeling it happen. Yeah. 
But then for someone else, I'm like, I can't watch. Don't like yeah. it. Speaking of, I had a note. This has nothing to do with <laughs> with anything that you've said, but I do have a note to discuss this in the yeah. podcast because I was so heavily offended. Yeah. Ladies, listen Let's to this. So I went to the doctor on Friday. Okay. Just a routine little checkup. Yep. And, you know, they say, go ahead and get on the scale. Yep. And typically, what do they say? Take your shoes off. Oh, yep. I Listen. Oh, go ahead and step on the scale for me. And I was like, oh, do you want me to take my shoes? Oh, no, it's fine. Sneakers, jeans, belt, watch, earrings. I had just slammed a coffee. I had yep. slammed a drink. I had breakfast that morning. Everything. She goes, go ahead and hop on the scale. And I do one of these. Get on the scale. Oh, yeah. What I does that say look. to you? What does that say to you whenever I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. For re reference, I'm staring at the ceiling. She announces it out loud. <gasps> Stop. Ashley, I'm not kidding you. I have had probably a three year streak of not knowing my weight. Like since the last time I went to the doctor's office where I was probably not very healthy oh on, the, on the end that I was like losing gosh. so much weight. And I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, I'm so skinny. And I haven't tracked it on purpose since then because there's no reason for me to know my weight. Yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not trying to gain or lose any weight. It's purely right. how my clothes fit. Can I move my body? Like what's going on here? hundred percent. I don't need to know. That's it. Like I can tell cause I've had the same clothes for years. If, if I'm getting or losing right. weight, I can tell cause I look for at sure. myself. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't want to know cause it gets in your head. Yeah. And I, I totally get it. I'm looking at the ceiling and she just reads it out loud. And of course it's like, Oh, I would have heavier than her. <laughs> heavier than before so because mad. I haven't weighed myself in three years. I've yeah. aged three years. So then I look down to see if it's correct. It was correct. And I'm like, <sighs> So I call my husband afterwards. I'm like, Austin. And I start spiraling the rest of the day. And it's one of those things before, beforehand, if you would have asked me, are you satisfied with yourself? Like how you look and everything? I'd be like, yeah, I feel great. Yeah. Afterwards, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I don't know anything anymore. I'm not confident of anything. Yeah. But it was just one of those moments. I'm like, how, how are you as a woman going to look at me staring at the ceiling my head is completely purposefully opposite trying of not the scale. to look. Yeah. And you're going to go ahead and announce it out loud. You think I'm just staring there for like curiosity about the ceiling tiles? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So that was something I was, that's what I, what was, what was the tagline from the, the last ick. podcast? It was, what have you had it with this week? Yes. <laughs> that nurse. That, yes. I was like, girl, come on. I, I had a three year streak of, of, oh my gosh. of peace. That did literally just yeah. happen to me mm -hmm. last Monday. I went to the doctor and she said the same thing. I had on my coat. I had on my fanny pack, like around, which, you know, probably didn't do too much but damage, stuff, but it's enough. Stuff, yeah. I had on clogs, yeah. I mean, sweatpants. I was fully we're not, we're loaded not traveling with here. heavy articles of clothing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, she goes, step on the scale. And I go, she didn't read it to me. But then when we got into the, like the room mm -hmm. or whatever, she asks me every single time mm -hmm. and I don't know how to answer, but she always goes, first question she ever asks, it's not, Hey, how are you? Nothing. She goes, is weight a concern for you? Every oh. single time. And I'm always like, I mean, I probably could lose a few pounds, but it's not like so what a, concerning that I, like, what I don't a know. What a question. I know. So, and, and I mean, I'm not judging, but there's plenty of nurses that work in that clinic that are not very about to do a bikini much competition. or any smaller than me. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Do you guys, is this how you talk to everyone? Is this or a concern for you? Did I just have a bad look on my face mm -hmm. today and you thought man we'll try her that happens to me I don't every know. time I go to the dermatologist because I have to go for skin cancer checks you know yeah. due to having it yes and whenever I go in they're always like so how are we feeling about the acne and I'm like oh, not here for that yeah but uh, thanks I don't think did you read my chart yeah before you exactly he'll, he'll start in? just like looking around like he'll like look at like the my shoulder or something and he's like so what do we want to do about that acne and I'm like I want to leave it actually. You know what? I, I like it a lot. I, I thought I was looking good. Alone. You know, I left the house today. <laughs> yeah. I looked in the mirror. I was like, you know, I feel I'm good about myself. Thanks for shooting that down. Yeah. So I really oh. appreciate it. Anyways, can you tell me if I have cancer or not? Yeah, so, please do what we're here for today. Yeah, I'm like, uh, anyways, well, I guess oh I'll strip down and let you look gosh. at all my moles. Now that I'm feeling really confident, <laughs> like trembling oh. in the corner. Yeah, I don't know what it is about that doctors and their so bedside manner, but I feel like it could definitely be improved. 100%. Mm -hmm. And it's also like, you're not even going there for that. No. That's not I'm what like, I'm here for Do you know why I made today. the appointment? Exactly. You do. It's in your chart. I'm pretty book. sure you asked me when I made the appointment, like <laughs> yeah. semi-annually. So yeah. yeah, I was, I've been offended at both my last medical visits. And I was like, oh, not good. But I know the girlies will understand it because I'm just pissed about it. But. Oh yeah. 100%. Okay. Can you tell me the story about meeting Gordon Ramsay? Yeah. So I was doing a culinary competition and it's pretty uneventful, but I was doing mm -hmm. a culinary competition in college and he was at a, a competition. I would lie about the story. I would tell it differently. I love your story. I mean, that is really the only thing that happened. It wasn't super exciting. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so it was cool. No one's going to fact check you. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. 
But, I mean, they could. Good he was for there. you for being honest. I do. <laughs> I, was like, I they can, could. He was there. Um, no, actually. So it's really funny. He slid into my DMs and he was in Springfield <laughs> and needed a private chef event at his house. So and then you really made out in the closet. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And his wife watched. Yeah. I would. That's the story I would tell probably. <laughs> yeah. But one of my one of my good friends, her main celebrity crush is Gordon Ramsay. Oh, and really? we were having a PowerPoint night and we looked up one of my favorite things to do, which we'll go into my new year's resolution, but one of my favorite things to do is show off my like TikTok edit folder. Yeah. Cause I have so many for all of my different celebrity crushes. And I am very proud of the art collection that I've accumulated over the years. So if conversation starts to die down, I turn into a boy and I'll like start just showing my edit compilation. Yeah. You know how sometimes guys, if they're just bored, they're like showing you their camera roll and they're like, yeah. Oh, here's me with a fish and whatever. So that's me. But I'll say, Oh my gosh, do you want to see my Tony Stark edits? And then I just start pulling them out. So in this situation, I had screencasted them onto the TV and I'm like taking requests. I'm like a DJ at this point. Yes. Everyone's throwing out names. She says, Gordon Ramsay. Do you know how many thirst traps of Gordon Ramsay exist on TikTok? I think there's a lot. A lot. I think a lot of women like being yelled at what he's got cooking. Mm. Um, not for me. <laughs> no, but, but maybe I'm too close to the. You're close to, yeah, yeah. I because of your I shared history, another. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it's too painful for you because of the making out in the yes, closet. Due I just to that, can't bear looking at it's him too anymore. Pa- <laughs> it's too painful. I completely understand mm. that. Oh my gosh, mm. yes, I have been burned by many a celebrity crush. You know. Mm just kidding they have all deeply impacted me in a positive way who would you say is your celebrity crush right now oh man probably the most important question I've asked all day I know it's I feel like it kind of that also bobbles around a little bit you can share multiple that's okay um Tom Hardy has kind of been like always Mm -hmm. a celebrity crush of mine yeah and then um okay he's on i'm watching a show right now on netflix it's like it's okay i'm not super into it right right but he's in 50 shades of gray but this but is not, not the show that's okay. not the show i'm watching and of course is it i the can't main guy? think of the yeah oh jamie dornan yes yeah always but he's funny in the yeah. show he's like running away from he i don't want to give too much away that's but okay. he's like um, what show is it I don't know the name of it. That's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm terrible. Semantics. <laughs> yeah. Um, do people really remember those yeah. things? I don't mm-hmm. know. No. <laughs> not me. Um, not podcast names. Not too, you, just, you just be clicking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just be clicking. I'd be watching. <laughs> Very visual um, person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but he like gets in an accident, forgets, like loses mm-hmm. his memory, and then he realizes he's actually like a criminal. It's like a whole Ooh. thing. It's very dramatic. Okay. Um, Good for so, him. Yeah. He's really showing off his range. <laughs> yes, I love is. that for him. Um, so yeah, that I, I would say those two probably. Are you an obsessive yeah. person? Like, no. Okay. Far, far from mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> probably the least, like, and it, I think sometimes maybe comes off as like, I'm unaware or like out of no. touch with certain things but I genuinely like it takes a lot for me to get get like excited about yeah. certain things or like get not excited I get excited about a lot of stuff but just get like, into it to where I'm like mm-hmm. obsessed with it I guess same here I don't keep up with pop culture it's yeah. just not for me yeah other than my career I guess yeah. I would say I'm obsessed well, that's with different. that yeah that's really different but other than that I support yeah, there's that. not and I don't know maybe I'm just not thinking of something right now but mm-hmm. I don't think I get too obsessed with too much stuff I mean mm-hmm. my dog yeah. I'm obsessed well, with Because he's, he's about to be an award winner. Yeah. He's That's about sure. to win me $10,000. Yeah, baby. We're going on vacation. <laughs> Put those thumbs to work. You take him to Bora Bora. <laughs> yeah. He does so a parade. That's where we're going for um, spring break. That would be Me and my dog after he wins me this get competition. Him, get him a matching mm-hmm. like a little um, bandana. Like you get a yes. swimsuit bandana. Yeah, That could be really cute. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you ever bake him anything? I know you're a chef. You're not a, you're a cook, not a baker. I know, um, the, I know the difference. Yes. No, you are. I don't want to be offensive. No. Oh my God. I'm leaving. You're like, uh, <laughs> I got to go. Out. Bye guys. <laughs> um, no, I do. I do know how to make homemade dog treats. Okay. Um, but no, typically he's spoiled rotten. Um, he gets nothing less. He gets pumpkin puree. Mm-hmm. If he's a good boy, mm-hmm. um, which he always is. Yes. Um, and then he gets steak. Oh, uh. Or he gets a little hamburger made. He's eating better than I am. Uh-huh. He, yeah. He eats mm. pretty good. So. I, Austin mm. made a pork steaks last night. Oh, yeah. Nice. every single time I get so annoyed that I have to like whittle the meat from the bone. Yeah. That's really the only comment I have on that. Because he was amazing. He yeah. did such a good job with it. But I, every time I feel like I'm on, like a, 
I'm like a cave woman. Yeah. Like trying to rip the meat apart with my yeah. bare hands. Yep. And by that, I mean my fork and knife. Yes. But still, it just is a lot of effort for me when I'm trying to watch suits. So Yes. Mama Jean's, in case he wants to do it again, Mama Jean's mm-hmm. has a really great boneless pork chop mm-hmm. um, from mm-hmm. New Venture Farms. Let me run our weekly rotation by you. Yes. So we try, I usually cook half the nights of the week that we're home, which okay. is approximately three. Okay. That's, I mean, it's, it's some, yeah. it's not, I'm not gonna say it's great, but that's the nights that we're home. So I'll, I'll get groceries for like the three or four nights that we are in the house. Yeah. We have a rotation of chicken and rice. Okay. Usually he'll cut it up and make it spicy. Okay. Salmon and rice. Okay. Which would be me doing yep. it. Yep. That's not, that one's you. Yep. Six <laughs> minutes in the rice cooker, baby. Okay. We will do a pork steak, which is going to be him. Okay. And then some kind of like a potato. Okay. And then like a carrot, okay. which are sides okay. alternate. We'll have asparagus, carrot, salad. Those are the ones okay. that we rotate through. It's like a little wheel we spin. Those are good. And then pork chops, like the skinny ones, the little mm-hmm. guys that cook in like 38 seconds. Mm-hmm. Those I can do as well. <laughs> Throw some Texas heat on there. Yes. And guess what? Rice. It is the most boring thing. That is the only reason I feel like I have any semblance of health is because our weekly meals are so like regimented. Yeah. Just because it's hard to cook for two people. It is. So those are the easiest foods to portion. Like other than that, if we're making a full meal, if you have a whole casserole pan of something, like we're not going to get through it. Yeah. And you guys are so busy. It's You're easy. They're both all fast. News. Very busy people. Yeah, so we, I understand that you want paths. like quick. Yeah. Yeah. We cross in the night. That's about <laughs> it. Someone did ask me, I don't know who it was um, on the, off the top of my head, but she was like, How do you, like, when do you and your husband hang out? Because yeah. I feel like you're always doing other things. I would also like to know. Well, <laughs> thank you for asking. We don't. I haven't seen him in 30 weeks. Um, no, we hang, we have like a surprising amount of downtime compared to like what I post. I just don't obviously post whenever I'm yeah. hanging out at home. But we have most mornings we spend together because we don't have to like be at work at a certain time. Nice. So usually like our routines are somewhat similar and then we go off to start work at like eight or eight 30. And then I see, him. we talk on the phone eight times a day and I'm not it. exaggerating like between every it. single thing. Cause he drives yeah. around for work. I'm also be bopping around town for work. So we yep. talk on the phone no less than six or seven times every single day. I love it just to keep in touch. And then we have dinner together most nights. And then also we're both night owls. So we'll stay oh, up good. like chit chatting. Yeah. But golf season is about to um, I was commence. just going to say. So we'll have our golf season estrangement. Okay. So, but that's okay. I think absence makes the heart grow fonder. I'm yes. personally a fan of golf season. So it's just nice not to be rushed in the evenings. You yeah. Know? Like whenever I have my stuff, the longer the sun exists like the longer my day exists yes so it i've been really condensed these days yes but whenever I, the sun is going to stay out until nine then i'll like work until six and then I'm, yeah. they don't go to the gym or go for a run then i come home and like we don't eat dinner until 8 45 because the day just feels longer yeah but now i feel like i have so much less time and i'm thankful that winter is coming to an end yeah so. okay i have a few more things hit me first of all um you did save my life in high school and you can't think that we would yes. not get this topic thrown in yeah i yeah. Okay. So let me give some backstory. Ashley was class of 2015. Yes. A year older than me at Nixa High School, Blue Ribbon School for mm-hmm. one. And I was a little rambunctious as a junior because I just wanted to shit talk. And guess what? I can't back it up. <laughs> never could. Never will be able to. So for me, here's what happened. Nixa has a couple rivals. Ozark is like the rival on paper. And then Kickapoo is the rival, I would say, due to just animosity in general yeah i don't I know agree. if that's still the case because i am oh you yeah. know removed <laughs> i'm almost 10 years removed. yeah i mean yeah. eight years removed so <laughs> you know but i had been dating this young man from kickapoo and it did not go well due to him um liking to date other girls at the same time as me yeah no that doesn't work and that this isn't my favorite thing <laughs> so it didn't work out and then as things do, this was like back when uh, Twitter was its own ecosystem. Like, I don't even know oh. if anything has replaced it, but it was almost like this big chat room. Yes. And I could do a full episode on Twitter culture during that one time period. Yes. Like 2014 to 2017. It caused so much trouble. It caused so much trouble. <laughs> my, my username is still the same. It's still Hans the Rapper because I thought it was funny I and I never changed it. it. But we went through this phase where everyone was like changing their handles to rapper names. Yeah. And I just never matured. But... Twitter has since kind of died out, which before it was like one of those things that ever you would tweet, everyone would see it. Yes. Everybody followed everybody. You yep. had like subtweet people. It oh, was yeah. like, that was the, the little thing. frog in the coffee cup or whatever. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's I the mean, Kermit thing. Yes. 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 I'm like, mm-hmm. geez. Yeah. The tea was piping hot. So that's exactly <laughs> how it was. And everyone would be involved in it. Like it wasn't something oh. that it was just like my little circle or anything. It was like the whole little high school ecosystem. I mean there were pages made yes to like create drama yes. in the high school like, like gossip girl yeah like pages. dm us stuff and then we'll tweet it anonymously yeah. and like yeah. cr- I mean yeah it was wild I'm personally victimized by those pages yes <laughs> not good at all 
Okay, so at this time, there's that bridge that extends over Campbell Avenue in Springfield. Yep. It's a green bridge right by Steak and Shake. Yep. And before this big basketball game, which was like a week or so after this breakup had just hit the fan and everything was like, you know, I was just angry. I was like full of molten lava yep. just waiting to spill over. <laughs> so my friends and I hatched this plan. We're like, you know what we should do? We should put cups in the bridge that spell out FTP for flush the poo. Or mm-hmm. the more profane version. But so we, we gathered our little cup supplies. We went up there late at night. We put FTP. We took some photos. Mm-hmm. And it was the night before this game. And then the game happens. Nick's a win, obviously. There was a lot of smack talk back and forth on the yes. internet. It did yep. get personal. A, mm-hmm. lot of, a lot of the girls were really mean. And my friends <laughs> and I were like, did we think this through? Because I don't think I was emotionally prepared for this. Yeah. And... The game happens. We go back. We're like, we should go back to the bridge and then change the cups Mm -hmm. to read the score. That would be iconic and hilarious because I'm still, I'm like, this win was for me. Yes. The the team, the whole basketball team showed up and showed up for me. They knew what I needed. Did they? No. They don't, they didn't know. They didn't care. (laughs) They literally wanted to just win the basketball game. But I was like, this was for me. Obviously I'm the main character. So my, my little friends and I, we go up there and we like are rearranging the cups to spell out the score of the game. And I hear some angry war cries coming from the opposite end of the bridge and some kickapoo girls that were older than us yeah. had camped out at the steak and shake waiting for us to fall into their trap. And, and we yeah. did yeah. in fact fall into the trap. So they yeah. come running up the bridge. They're cussing at us. They're like, get off this bridge. We're going to beat your ass. And I was like, yeah, you know, and I, like I said, could never back it up. My yeah. mouth has been writing checks that I could not cash for a long time. <laughs> and I, I'm standing there, cups in hand. My friends are like, what do we do? They have ketchup bottles and milkshakes that they've taken from the Steak and Shake establishment yeah. that they start throwing at us. So yeah. I'm, I'm now in my white out outfit covered in, in ketchup, covered in ketchup and yeah. milkshakes. And we're starting to retreat because my strategy in that situation was to bolt. Yeah. And then <laughs> I, <run>. I hear, <laughs> hey, hey, back off. And who do I see <laughs> running up the bridge from the opposite side? But my hero, Me. Ashley Hunt. Yeah. And I think I like had seen the girls coming up the other mm-hmm. side and I was like, oh, this is, I just knew who they were. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this ain't going to end well for any of those girls. Mm, no. So I was like, I'll be nice. I'll mm-hmm. go. No. You, but yeah. You, you see the bat signal from the sky? <laughs> yeah. I was like, Were you okay. just driving by or like what had happened? Yeah. No, I was driving by. Oh, so the Lord I put you there. Had, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I just happened to know the girls from Kickapoo. We weren't really friends, but I like knew who mm-hmm. they were and I knew they were up to no good. And this was your senior year. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I saw him walking up the bridge and then I saw you and all your girly friends mm-hmm. up there running away Trembling. from the ketchup, yeah. <laughs> from yeah. the ketchup sprays. And I really, they probably were girls that would have gotten violent. Yes. So would have, would have yeah. smacked me down. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was just thinking like, well, if I could do something to maybe help them, yeah. I will try. And guess what? So you, you got him down. Yeah. And she mm-hmm. was like, all right, all right. So mm-hmm. yeah. she got her posse of bullies to yeah. leave him alone. Meanwhile, so. I'm, I'm cowering <laughs> behind Ash and I'm like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what she said. And yeah. I remember like afterwards we got, um, we left the mm-hmm. bridge. We get mm-hmm. into my 2002 Acura TL. Yeah. Little old beater car. Yep. And we start driving around playing. All I do is win. Yeah. And then I, one of the girls tweeted and she was like, can someone tell that redhead with the shitty old car to stop <laughs> playing that song? And I was like, oh, shitty old car. <laughs> Meanwhile, Excuse me. I'm, I'm offended as if I'm not antagonizing people. Yeah. Like I get, I'm like, what? What did I do? Like, why am I being victimized? Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm the one that's going to do all the, you know what? Like I said, I was just trying to start things at yep. that age, 16, yep. stirring the pot. Mm-hmm. Turns out you, if you can't handle the heat, you should get out of the kitchen. And I cannot handle the heat. Yeah. And guess what? I don't start things anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was... That yeah. was something, all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we got you out of there. You did. And then you, your mom thanks me for it every time she every sees time. me. And we are going my on a Hannah, decade. My Hannah is still alive she because be of you. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm you like, know what? I like you're to think, welcome. I like to think that at some point I would have I would have gotten out, you know, yeah. maybe with a, a bruise or two. Yeah, you could have probably pushed one of your other friends. Yeah, sacrifice. Down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I don't have to be fast, I just have to be faster than them. Yeah. And I think I was. Yeah, I think so, so for sure. You know what? Yeah. But it wouldn't have been the same if it weren't for you. So yeah. I do thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Such you have nice saved my compliment. life and, and this podcast mm-hmm. can exist because of you. So do you have any final thoughts? I don't know. I don't think so. Nothing to plug? I don't. I feel like I've been plugging. You know what? You don't need new business anyways. Things. So yeah, unfortunately, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, sorry. Don't call. Don't text. I <laughs> yeah, actually don't want my business. phone's on airplane mode on the floor. Yeah. so I I'm won't just here be to, to it tell you guys soon. not to call or text me because I yeah. am too successful. Yeah. So thank you for asking, but I don't want to hear from you. 
Yeah. But we are super excited for the brunch on Sunday. Yes. Can't wait. It's going to be amazing. You'll yes. see all the content in the entire world and you'll probably get very sick of it. But we are so thankful to have had you on the podcast. Thank Honored you. to have you as our first guest that's not related to me. Yes. Thank so, you for having me. Thank you. We love you and we will see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye guys. Thank you.